today is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold press paper. I've taped it down so that it's 8 by 8 inches squared. I'm using a ruler to make a 4 by 4 graph. This makes it a little bit easier because you can break your drawing down into four small sections rather than one large one and I find it's a lot easier to get a better drawing result when you use a graph. Now of course if you're drawing directly on your watercolor paper you will want to erase those graph lines when you're all done. I'm keeping the sketch fairly simple at first, just getting the basic shapes. And then once I'm confident that I've got the correct measurements and shapes, I can go back in and tighten everything up and press a little bit harder with my pencil, but I still wanna make sure that I'm not causing any indents in the paper. I do wanna make sure my drawing is really accurate because when we go over it with the pen in a little bit, it needs to be a perfect guide for adding the ink and wash afterwards. So I'm tightening up all of my pencil lines, adding the eye, the nose, and all of these little details where light and shadow are separated. It's important to include just as much information as you need so that you can get started confidently with your painting. You'll want to include little details like where pieces of the mane are overlapping, where you have separations in light and shadow. Once you're happy with your sketch, go ahead and grab a waterproof pen or I'm using a Copic multi-liner and you can start tracing the outline of your pencil markings. Having a high quality pen that can create fine lines or thicker lines depending on how much pressure you use will be helpful when you're doing ink like this. I just trace lightly on the mane. Since this is a white horse, I don't wanna to press too hard with my pen or produce too dark of markings. But any areas that are in dark shadow, I use a cross hatching technique to darken up with the pen. And I use strong decisive lines just drawing right over my pencil marks. You can see my hand was kind of dragging into the areas of pencil, causing a lot of blurring of the graphite, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Focus on getting a really good sketch with your pen, and you can even fill in the eye entirely. Any areas that are totally black, you can fill in with your pen. It is important to choose a pen that is waterproof and that has a fine enough tip that it can produce really nice texture and fine lines for you. You can see I use tiny little lines to indicate some of the shadow shapes and those really subtle details in the head and on the muzzle. Set your pen aside and erase all of your pencil marks. This will also erase any smudges that may have happened when your hand dragged across your drawing. I use a soft towel to remove the bits of eraser on the paper. We're now ready to start the watercolor portion of this. I'm using primary colors today. I have a cool blue, a warm blue, a cool red, a warm red, a cool yellow, and a warm yellow. This is my ultramarine blue by Daniel Smith. It's a warm blue, which means it's got a little more purple in it or a little more red than a cool blue would. And this is the first color I'm putting down. Anywhere I see hints of blue in my reference photo, I'm really playing those up with this ultramarine, particularly in the shadow areas. I'm using a Princeton Neptune half inch flat wash brush, which is so great for not only getting hard edges when you use that flat edge, but it also gets nice broad, bold brush strokes and it's easy to cover large areas with a large brush like this. It's one of my favorite brushes to have on hand. You can also feather it away to produce the effect of dark to light with just one quick little brush stroke. I'm using broad brush strokes with plenty of water all across the chest anywhere I see cool shadows in my reference photo and even pulling some of that light wash up into the mane. The next color I'm mixing up is a combination of my cool yellow and my warm red. These are Lemon Yellow and Scarlet Lake by Holbein. It's producing sort of a peach tone, which is great for the tan color that I see in the mane in my reference photo. Still really light washes for now. The Scarlet Lake, the warm red, and the cool yellow combined produce a really nice rich reddish orange. I continue to pump up those colors and use quick swooping brush strokes, still with my half inch flat brush. I'm also adding another layer over the top of the ultramarine in the shadow areas. The combination of the red over the blue tends to look a little bit brown, so they're neutralizing each other and producing a darker shadow tone. Inside of the shadows in the chest, I'm using more of a mixture of my reds and just continuing to add shadow colors with a little bit more ultramarine. Pure color, I'm boosting the color in the mane and on the neck. If you want really rich colors, just dip directly into your palette with very little water added. I like to use more conservative washes at first. I don't wanna to go too dark too soon because it's a little bit easier to build up your values and layers than it is to remove them back again. Take your time and work in layers. This purple is a combination of my red and blue. I'm using a watered down alizarin crimson, which is my cool red for the pink tone on the muzzle. 
and using very specific brush strokes to produce those little wrinkles on his soft muzzle. For the tail, this brown is just kind of a combination of my two reds and blue. And I'm continuing to mix up some more of that tan peach tone using my yellows and a little hint of red. I want to be really subtle here with these light yellows in the mane. Remember that this is a white horse, so if you overdo it with your values or go too dark too soon, it makes it really difficult to remove that color back out. When you cross the yellow over the top of the blue, of course you get a green, and I'm really liking the addition of green in the mane. I'm also combining my ultramarine and lemon yellow to produce some more greenish shadow tones. And of course, when I mix in some red, I get some purple. I'm really just playing with all the colors of the rainbow here. Anytime you're painting a white subject matter, like a white horse or a white dog, or even a person with very fair skin, you're gonna be amazed at how many colors you see, especially in the shadows. White tends to reflect all the colors around it. So in this case, the white horse is surrounded by greenery and all the colors from the trees and the surrounding fence even, all of those colors are bouncing back off of his beautiful white fur. I'm using extra pops of my warm yellow. I think it looks really cool when you include pure pigment in your primary color painting, some pure red here in the main, but be sparing with these little pops of color. You don't wanna overdo it. Of course, that really just depends on what you're going for. If you would really like to play up those colors and be even more dramatic with them, I'd love to see that. If you guys decide to try this project, by the way, please tag me on Instagram at E. Olson Art. I'd love to see it. I will include a link in the description to this reference photo. It's free on Pixabay. Really quick, if you guys are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I wanna let you know that this tutorial is available in real time. If you're ready to take your watercolor skills to the next level, head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can sign up for my watercolor mastery membership. For just a small amount per month, you'll have access to all of my fully narrated real-time tutorials, which include a complete list of supplies used in each project, reference photos, and traceable line drawings. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see all the tutorials that are currently available, and I add more every month. All right, let's get back to the video. I'm using more of my cool blue here on the muzzle and continuing to add streaks of color into the mane and a little bit more red along the belly. Now for my background, I'm just taking dabs of color, just dipping directly into each of my primary colors and kind of alternating back and forth between them. It's up to you if you want to rinse your brush in between to keep your colors really pure, or you can just allow them to merge on the palette, producing more of a murky background color. This is so much fun when you get to just paint wet on dry, side-by-side -side colors, allowing the colors to charge into each other and mix on the paper. I'm including lots of yellow and blue to suggest the green background of the pasture and the trees behind the horse, and using more of my cool blue and red to produce a black in the upper right corner and a little extra red in the left corner, kind of suggesting trees growing in the background. With a little bit more cool blue in the mane, I'm adding more specific pops of color and really bold brush strokes in the chest and neck. Now, if you want to, you can continue to add more pops of pure color. I'm really loving the look of pure blue, especially in these shadows on the white horse. But be sure to leave plenty of areas of the white of the paper showing through so that we still get a strong sense of the brilliant sunlight and the white coloring of the horse's fur. Just a few more bold brush strokes, a couple of pops of my warm yellow here and there. This is gonna give the painting some color harmony. And then if you want to adjust your background, I'm gonna darken up my left-hand corner of the background and just make it appear more of a vignette surrounding the horse. I'm adding a few more swirling brush strokes. I'm loving this half-inch flat brush to create movement and shape within the painting. And then darkening up a few more shadow shapes and adding some subtle anatomy details to the horse's face. Make sure to check your values, and if you need to darken any areas, you can easily mix up black using your dark blue and dark red and a little bit of your yellow. And that's what I'm using to darken up some of these areas in the shadow. The last thing, of course, is to add the signature and to remove the tape. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Check out these other videos all about painting horses and watercolor, and I'll see you there.